Hello, 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 everyone. I am Matt Williamson. How's everyone doing this fine day? We are uh, officially, I would say, in the off season. You know, the draft is behind us. Not a lot of stuff going on day to day in the league, but there will be more moves. I'm, I'm sure the Steelers are not done. But I mentioned this kind of teased us yesterday that I had planned on doing homework on the Steelers' undrafted free agents, and there's a handful of them I wanted to highlight to you guys that I think could be in the mix. You know, you know that four quarterbacks are going to be in the mix for the Steelers. Um, they're going to keep three and maybe another guy in the practice squad. But John Reese Plumley from Central Florida is just a really interesting player. And by the Steelers' standards, they gave him a big chunk of signing bonus, which is a whole key for undrafted free agents, by the way. Now, like, side note, I was in charge of signing – the year I was with the Browns, I was in charge of signing – uh, three wide receiver undrafted free agents. We drafted Braylon Edwards. We need three more of them. And back then, there wasn't as much money. I, they get here's ten grand, Matt. Divvy it up at however you want. I think I gave ninety five hundred to Josh Cribs, and the other two each got like two hundred fifty bucks. Who I don't even remember who they are. So anyway, um, so Plumley is an athlete. You're gonna see this over and over. I mean, there's even talk maybe he's a wide receiver at the next level. Six foot, little over two hundred pounds. Give you some idea, and, and this past year, he played a baseball game for Central Florida and then hopped in a jump, uh, golf cart and flew across campus and played the spring game for Central Florida. So I'm not saying he's Deion Sanders or Bo Jackson, folks, but he give you some idea. I mean, he's not a great passer, not a great arm talent, um, a lot of designated runs, you know, which makes a, a, a lot of sense. But he's a competitor. Um, there's some Taysom Hill talk here, um, you know, specialty stuff. I'm just the Steelers must have some kind of plan. I mean, certainly has above average speed um, for a quarterback. You know, I mean, there's a lot of versatility. He'll break tackles. He's not just a pure speed guy, but he's not a four three guy. I mean, he's not Lamar. Um, he might have to see if he can, you know, run routes, things like that. Um, started his career at Ole Miss as Matt Corral's backup. And, you know, he actually made a switch to wide receiver at one point. In 2021, he caught 17 or 19 passes for over 200 yards. So we'll see. I mean, I, I think he's interesting. He led all FBS quarterbacks in rushing yards last year in 2022, though, 862 with 11 touchdowns on the ground, another over 500 rushing yards last year. So he's done a lot of stuff, you know, in the past two seasons, he's got a 29 to 16 INT ratio. So, you know, again, Taysom Hill, not a great passer. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, interesting. Maybe he's even a return guy. You know, I mean, I think that would make a lot of sense too. special teamer in general, you know, toughness guy. Taysom Hill's done a lot of special team stuff. Taysom Hill can be like the personal protector on punt team and you snap it directly to him and give you some gadget stuff that way. So, you know, we'll see what happens with Plumlee, but it's a name you need to know. <laughs> Bet Online's your number one source for summer sports this season, from Major League Baseball to golf to NBA to NHL playoffs. All the latest stats, news, scores available to follow on your favorite teams. Get the latest odds lines, including the latest team matchups, player props, and odds on just about every sport out there. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, so some of these other names, they're not super exciting. Don't get me wrong. Um, Michigan State's Jacoby Windman, he's 6'1", 235. He's just a good football player. I mean, he only lasted three games before a pec injury, so maybe we would, maybe he could have got himself up to draftable standpoint. But he ran a 4.65, you know. I mean, he's a fast dude. He's in... I haven't told you his position. He's an outside linebacker is what he's listed at. Now, for the Steelers, I look at him as probably a very undersized edge rusher. You know, I mean, 6'1", 235. But is he going to have to convert to off-the-ball linebacker here? 
can he do that? I mean, he does have some sack p- production at Michigan State. It's probably why he wasn't picked it along with the injury and in that he's a good football player, but what exactly do you do with this guy? Which screams special teams, but he better be awesome at it to get the chance. So Jacoby Winman, Michigan State. Another interesting dude is Julius Welshoff from Charlotte. Steelers obviously have serious Charlotte connections. He is an edge, but he's 6'7", 257. But what's cool about him, well, it's a lot of things, but he's from Germany. So he gets in this international player pathway program. So they, every team, if you don't know, they get a roster exemption. You get to carry an extra player in training camp and on the practice squad from the international player pathway. So he's probably going to be on the team, even if he stinks, to be honest with you, because why not? You know, all you do is feed him and, you know, throw him, you know, clothing his way and whatnot, put him on the scout team, see what happens. Um, But he played in 35 games before, you know, with, with the Wolverines before he transferred to Charlotte. And he has traits. I mean, he only played four games this past year. But he ran just under a 4.8 at 6.7, 257. I know that's not super exciting. Frankly, if he wasn't German, I don't know if he'd be on a roster. But he's going to be the big 6.7 edge guy out there to look at. This dude, kind of all you know is Georgia running back. And Dejon Edwards, I might, I might have butchered his first name. He's short and he's slow. <laughs> so that's not great. So that's why you get undrafted. He's 5.9, ran a 4.6. But he's 213 pounds, and he runs hard. And he got a lot of run with the Bulldogs, which is kind of all you need to know. You know what I mean? I mean, this guy was heavily recruited, as all running backs are in Georgia. Four-star recruit. 24 touchdowns. um, 13 of them last season. 880 yards last season. They were a backfield by committee, but he got a lot of run. And he isn't fast, but he's very quick. Low to the ground in a Jalen Warren-like manner. Nasty as could be. Good in pass protection. Special teams potential for sure. Um, He runs hard with some nastiness. Like, my hunch is, (laughs) if we're betting right now, who's going to be the Steelers' preseason rushing champion? It's probably going to be Edwards. So, I have a feeling you're going to see a lot of him. Sees things well. Sets up blockers. Attacks downhill. I mean, it's just not super dynamic at all, you know, but doesn't mean he can't stick. Now, the best one of the group, maybe it's Plumlee, but you guys have probably watched Beanie Bishop Jr. from West Virginia a fair amount. So I'm not exactly sure why he didn't get drafted, to be honest with you. So he started at Western Kentucky, four years there. Then he transferred to Minnesota. And then he landed in WVU. So he's been around the block, but he led the FBS last year with 24 pass defended and added four interceptions. He was consensus all American for the Mountaineers. He ran a 4 3 9 at his pro day. He's very quick and aggressive. Yes, he's small. He's 5'9, he's 180 pounds for a slot corner. But there's a position here for slot corners and. He didn't even get invited to the combine. I mean, I, I super tough, super quick, fast, small, productive, six years in college. This seems like someone that should have got drafted. I mean, I'm really having a hard time of why he wasn't picked earlier. And I guess Omar Khan kind of raved about him too after the process. Um, but he's not great, but I can't believe that someone didn't use a sixth or seventh round pick on him. Um, so that's a name to know. I mean, I think he amazingly could be in the mix right this minute and that's going to change. And they're going to add somebody that's been around the block for the Steelers vacant slot corner job, Beanie Bishop, West Virginia. He can room with Zach Frazier too. You know, you gotta love that. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm, I'm digging a little deep here on these undrafted guys. And frankly, I usually don't pay as much attention to them as I should this time of year. But I just know once I get to camp and I'm sitting there watching every practice and on the air talking about them, there's always four or five of these guys that you start to notice and then they do another good thing. And, you know, kind of like 
you know, Williams, the tight end last year, you know, guys, I didn't even know who they were when I got to camp. So I wanted to get ahead of it. I wanted to tell you guys a little bit ahead of it. And again, this running back's going to get a ton of run quarterbacks and get, you know, what do you think fourth quarters are going to look like in the preseason? It's probably going to be Plumley. It's not going to be Wilson or Fields out there. There's no reason to put Allen out there. So these are guys that are going to touch the ball and you'll see them a lot. And my man from WVU could even be on the field a lot opening day. So we'll see. Uh, take care. Over and out. <laughs>